The Pulse X kit from Vandy Vape. The Pulse X kit was sent to me for a review from SourceMore.com. This is nearly a year old now, having been released around August of 2018, but it's the latest version of the Pulse mod, and this comes with the Pulse X RDA. I actually reviewed the Pulse 80 watt last year, and I loved it, and I still use it, which I think says a lot about it, at least for me. It's a great device. Well, the Pulse X is the upgraded 90 watt version, so let's take a look at this kit. It handles 5 watts to 90 watts max. It's 200 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 to 315 Celsius. It's compatible with 18, 650, 2700, and 21700 size batteries. It's 82.6 millimeters tall, 54.8 millimeters in depth, and 27 millimeters thick. The output voltage is 0.5 to 9.5 volts. The resistance range is 0 0.05 to 3 ohms. It comes in 17 colors, and you can get it for $48.00. 26 cents from sourcemore.com. The Pulse X RDA is dual coil, it has an X shaped deck, and it's squonk compatible. In the box, you get the Pulse X mod, the Pulse X RDA, an 8 mil squonk bottle, 18650 battery adapter, an extra airflow cap a USB cable, some accessories, and a user manual. I really like the overall design of the Pulse series of mods. I'm not a fan of all the different colors, but there's so many colors to pick from that there has to be at least one that you'll like. Sourcemore sent me the Kill Devil Hills variation, which has a green marbleized look. I actually really wanted one of these plates when they were released for the 80 watt version, but now that I see it in person, the colors are much darker and less vivid than the pictures that Vandy Vape shows on their site. So it's a little disappointing, and I think it's almost like a bait and switch. The images online should be true to life, not heavily edited. So I'm not a huge fan of the colors of the Kill Devil Hills version. I mean, they're okay, but I would have liked them to be brighter but that doesn't take away from the rest of the design and the performance. The panels snap into place with nice strong magnets, and the panels are made out of plastic, but they're thick and they feel durable. Also, what's really cool is that the panels from the 80 watt version will fit this too, and vice versa. If you have them, you can use them. On the top is the 510 connection. It looks nice, and there's a strong spring-loaded pin inside. On the front of the device is the firing button, which has a nice click to it. Beneath that, you'll have the display screen, which is nice and bright. And then beneath that, you have the up and down buttons to change settings, and the micro USB port that can be used for firmware updates and battery charging. Although I do want to mention that it's always better to charge your batteries in an external charger rather than in the device. It's, it's just safer. And then size. It's 3.2 inches tall, 2.1 inches front to back, and 1 inch from side to side. So the chipset in the Pulse is the same Vandy chip from the first Pulse, which was a great chip in my opinion. It has a lot of features, and it fires extremely fast. It's also firmware upgradable, but in the entire year that the Pulse X has been out, there hasn't been one upgrade. I don't know if they ever will, and maybe it doesn't need one. The previous version of the Pulse, the 80 watt, had three firmware updates, so it's reasonable to believe that everything that needed to be fixed was already covered before the Pulse X was released. And of course you have your typical safety features, overheating protection, open circuit protection, short circuit protection, overcurrent protection, overtime protection, and low battery warnings. All right, let's go over features and modes. So first, there are four settings that aren't in the menu. You press and hold the firing button and the up button at the same time to lock the up and down buttons, but you can still fire it. If you press and hold the firing button and the down button at the same time, it'll flip the screen. If you press and hold the up, down, and fire buttons, you'll go into stealth mode. And then you have a mode called no lift shift. So if you quickly press up and down at the same time fast, twice fast, the device will let you reread the resistance of the atomizer. Okay, now the modes. To change modes, press the fire button three times fast. Voltage mode, which works like any typical regular wattage mode, nothing crazy here. Temperature control mode, or TC, again, nothing new with this mode. As long as you're using temperature control supported coils or wire, the device will attempt to keep you at the temperature that you prefer while preventing you from burning the cotton if it gets dry. And this mode supports Ni200, stainless steel, and titanium. If you want to change the wattage in this mode, you press the fire button four times. And then you have bypass mode, which makes the device work like a mech mod in terms of delivering power based on that resistance of your atomizer build and also the charge of your batteries. But of course you get all of the safety features of a regulated device. To get into the settings menu, you press and hold the up and down buttons at the same time. So first you have the DIY one 
dash five setting and that lets you adjust the custom curves on either temp control or voltage wattage mode and you have five memory slots that you can save custom curves to and these curves let you fine tune how the device fires through all 10 seconds of a hit so for example you can set the first second to 40 watts second to 80 watts third second down to 50 watts and so on however you want then you have n dash h this is the boost power setting and that lets you set how strong you want the device to deliver power when you first hit that fire button you can set it to normal or hard there's an extra feature here when you're in hard mode if you press the firing button four times you get a new menu and this lets you adjust how hard you want it to hit and for how long so at its max you can add an extra 10 watts bringing the device up to 100 watts at least for the few initial seconds of your hit and then the id and version settings they just give you some information about your device the tools menu so this is a neat feature so in here you can add or remove settings from the main menu so if you never use temperature control or bypass mode for example you can turn those off in the menu and then when you go back to the main menu they're not there anymore and i love this feature because it makes it so that i don't have to navigate through modes that i don't ever use or care about nls lets you turn off the no lift shift feature st lets you set or turn off the sleep time settings which is how many seconds before the device turns off after being fired bri is brightness that lets you change the brightness of the screen fir is the fire lock and that lets you lock the firing button so, so that you can't fire it RST is reset, and that lets you reset all of your settings to factory default. All right, so the original Pulse 80 watt only supported 18650 and 2700 batteries. The Pulse X still supports those, but now also 21700 batteries. So that's the main change here, but it's a nice change because a lot of people really like 2700s since they have such long life. The batteries are easy to install. They just slide right into place, and when you want to take them out, you take the back panel off and push the battery out. If you use an 18650, you will need to use the battery sleeve that's included in the box to add more height to the battery. Now, as far as I know, it doesn't really matter which end of the battery that you put that sleeve on, but Vandy Vape shows it on the negative end of the battery. So you can do that if you want to follow their lead. All right, now let's talk about the Pulse X RDA. The RDA looks nice. Nothing really interesting on the outside, but it looks fine. And you get a big A10 resin drip tip, which also looks good on the top. The top cap has airflow slots that are angled down, which helps to prevent leaking. And it's conical on the inside to help produce better flavor. To change the airflow, you turn the top cap and you can open it as much as you want or close it down entirely. I like being able to close it off so that I, I don't have to worry about leaking issues in my pocket or my backpack. The cap slides smoothly and it works well. So no complaints for me on that. The barrel has honeycomb airflow holes on both sides. On the insides, there are notches that align with the deck so that you can be sure that it's always in the right place. And that also prevents the barrel from spinning around when you're tightening it down or taking it off of the device. So it's a good feature. You also get this clear acrylic cap. And this is basically the drip tip, top cap, and barrel all molded into one piece. With this, you get a lot more airflow than the metal barrel. You can't adjust the airflow at all on this. So this is for those of you who like a lot of airflow. All right, the build deck. So this is a dual coil only deck. You can't really do single coils in here. The deck is really unique though. It's like two posts stacked up on top of each other, forming an X shape. The post screws are Phillips head screws, but you have flatheads in the box if you wanna use those instead. With the post opened all the way up, you get lots of space to add big coils. The kit comes with some pre-built triple fused Claptons, so you can fit some decent sized coils in here. If you care about precise specs, these are made with NI80 wire. There are three strands of 28 gauge wire that are wrapped with 38 gauge wire. The inner diameter is three millimeters, there are six wraps, and they come out to 0.41 ohms. Vandy Vape actually sells these wires, both in spools so that you can wrap your own or in pre-wrapped coils so that you can just install them right into the RDA. To install the coils, just put one leg in the top post and the other leg in the bottom post. Position the coils near the middle of both posts, clip your legs on the other side, add your cotton, and tighten it all down. It's really easy to build. And you can also do vertical coils too because of the way the posts are stacked on top of each other and the post holes are at equal distance from each other. So that's pretty cool too. The squonk holes are at the top and they drop e-liquid right over the top of the coils. If you get too much liquid in there, there are holes near the base of the posts that suck up that excess e-liquid. Of course, that only works in squonk mode. If you're using this in dripper mode, the squonk holes don't do anything. So the Pulse X mod is basically the same as the 80 watt version, but now you get 90 watts and the ability to use 21700 batteries. And it, uh, the menu's been changed around a little bit too. If you already own the 80 watt version, I would say just stick with it. There's no reason to upgrade unless you really want to use 21700 batteries, which actually is a really nice feature since you can get way more battery life and if you don't have the 90 watt version then yeah absolutely get this it's an awesome device that works great the rda is nice too it's easy to build and the flavor is really good the airflow is nice too overall 
This whole kit is pretty nice. So this was sent to me for a review from sourcemore.com. So if this sounds like something that you'd like, you can get it from them for $54.45. All right, thanks for checking out this review and I'll catch you on the next one.